You ready, Nico? Hi, guys. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> My name's Nicole Branson. And I'm Deshay, admin here at New Beginnings Family Services. And we are going to actually be talking over cultural diversity, ethnic hair care today. So I know you guys are really excited and ready to hear a lot about the subjects. So like, comment, and yes. share the video, and you'll get a um, prize. Yeah, well, you'll be put in for a drawing for a chance to win a gift yes. card. So but you have to like our page. You have to comment, definitely. So um, let's get with our questions. Yeah, so um, ask questions. Feel free to ask questions and um, we'll try and answer them as they come in. Yes. Hello, welcome. I see um, one person. Yeah. I'm Nicole. This is Deshay Thompson from a New Beginnings. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Um, we're going to be talking about, um, would you like to tell them what we're going to be talking about? Yes. So here at New Beginnings, what we try to do is really encourage our foster parents to understand Hi, Teresa. diversity <laughs> when it comes into play in the foster care world. So uh, diversity is a really huge part of foster care, and that's what we're going to go over today and break it down so everyone kind of understands why it's so important when a child comes into a home and we throw in the whole cultural diversity, their backgrounds, ethnicity, their race, all those things really do um, are really do come into play when they're in home, in a home, foster and being home. educated about it. Yes. And when you take care of the the kiddos. So um, feel free to ask questions. We would be happy to answer. Um, during this video, um, we would like you to comment what cultural diversity means to you. Yes. Um, if it's impacted you in a certain way with a kiddo, um, if, um, I don't know, if you have a comment about um, an experience that you've had with um, maybe somebody from a different um country or culture um you can talk about your um, favorite time um that maybe you've been in another country or your favorite experience that you've had with somebody of a different culture um anything that goes along with cultural diversity we'd love to hear um your experiences that's right so uh, we actually have one question how can i help a child feel comfortable if we are religious and the child is not. That's really a great question, especially yes. in foster um, care. Yeah, with <laughs> with different children maybe coming from different cultures and different religions. Um, so, really, I would say being getting educated about that child's um, religion, if they are a different religion, um, maybe educating them about your religion. Mm -hmm. um, getting them involved in things that mm -hmm. you do. So then maybe say um, you want them to come to a service, um, inch by inch, no no push for a child because that will make them feel a little bit uncomfortable. But inch by inch, uh, take them to a service, uh, have them meet people that, uh, you know, has the same religion as you. Try to get them interested. Uh, do some activities yep. that, you know, go along with your religion. Uh, have small get-togethers where you guys can openly discuss about it to make the child feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, even as small as like coloring pages or puzzles and then you guys can talk about it versus just kind of sitting face to face because that could be kind of awkward. But try to make it something really fun. Another good thing would be, hey Terry, thanks for joining. Hey. Welcome. We're talking about cultural diversity. Um, so, but another good thing that you can do, Teresa, um, is um, maybe introduce the child to some of the children uh, that are at that church, the children yes. that are at the church that are their age, um, and maybe that will help them be more comfortable as well. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I answered, we answered your question, yeah. um, and if you have any other questions to piggy off, piggyback off that, feel free to ask. Yes. So, um, and everybody that hasn't heard, um, during this video, we want you to talk about um, what cultural cultural diversity means to you? Um, does it mean that you have a a family member that is from another culture? Um, 
that mm -hmm. you enjoy cooking their foods. Or personal experience dealing with cultural diversity. Yes. So say you, you do meet a new friend, how did you adjust to their different backgrounds and views on things? Or if you had a child, if you are a foster parent uh, that is viewing this right now, uh, how did you adjust to that child with a different religion or culture or ethnicity mm -hmm. in your home? Uh, how did you make them feel comfortable? How did you make yourself feel comfortable? How did you make your actual biological family in the home feel comfortable to make this child feel comfortable? Oh, here we go. Got another question. My son is biracial. He is trying to learn more about his African American culture, but sometimes gravitates to negative role models. How can I help him find more positive role models? That's a really big question. Would you like and to I answer like that, that question. <laughs> okay, so that's a really great question. Um, if he wants to know a little bit more about his African American culture, it depends on where you want to start. You can start all the way, um, like way, way back in history. Or you can start in present day. If you want him to be able to start viewing a lot more better role models, sometimes he would just have to do the research. You do the research with them. Um, I know a lot of people view a lot of um, role models of the African American race to be negative, but there's a lot of positive behind them. If you do the research, there may be a lot of positive things that come with them, like celebrities or uh, things like that. If it's friends, I would talk to him or he or she about being around better friends, uh, trying to stay obvious if they're negative role models, probably not be around them. Are there um, groups on Facebook that you know of maybe? There are some groups on Facebook, but you would have to step in first as a parent just to make sure that, that it is the safe. right group yeah. and it's safe. Yeah. Hi, thanks for watching, thanks yeah. for joining, and hello. Since he is biracial, there are so many different programs. There is uh, community places where he could go to mm -hmm. to uh, get a little bit more diverse, especially if he wants to learn a little bit more about being African American. You can bring him around people who are just like him too and see if there's things that they can relate on to make him actually feel very comfortable. Going out in the community too, um, there might be, I don't know, different markets that you can go to where there's gonna be different people, different uh, races, um, different sporting events. Yes. Um, I mean, you're gonna interact with lots of people, lot of in, people. in different you know, um, outings. So, um, maybe being around more people uh, that are African-American might make him feel yeah. more comfortable. Exactly. Um, if there are people in your church maybe also that um, are African-American, uh, maybe families that you can um, link up with and um, see if they have children, then you can. That he can relate to. Yeah. Yeah, as a parent, definitely I completely understand because my son is biracial himself, so I'm pretty sure I will come into that I'll come to have that day where he's going to ask those questions and things too. But it's all about me also as a parent making sure that when I'm trying to find people who he can relate to and stuff, I ask them those questions. I'm never afraid because I know a lot of uh, parents are like, should I walk up to that person and ask that question? I don't want to offend them. You won't. It, to them, they find it very it's awesome because they're like, of course, I'm going to teach you something you don't know. You're wanting to, <laughs> yeah, they're wanting yeah. to learn and yeah. It's better to know than not know. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Okay. I went to an office today and they had printed out great biographies and taped them around the room and hallways. Maybe I will try that too. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. So, um, another thing that we're going to talk about, you feel free to throw out questions. Um, during this whole video, yeah. we're happy to answer. Um, but another thing we're going to talk about um, is ethnic hair care. Yes. Um, something that you might have um, questioned maybe as a foster parent, maybe don't know much about. Um, Shay's going to talk to you more about um, that, you yes. know, since she has um, <laughs> actual experience with working hair. with hair. <laughs> yes. yes. So, um, so, um, go ahead. <laughs> dealing with ethnic hair care, just one more thing with cultural diversity. So, by nature in foster care, um, cultural diversity is key. So, when a child is placed in a home, um, it is kind of difficult for them to adjust because everything is so different. Uh, the foster parent may be different, they may have different views, the foster parent might have different views. So, it's all about that big A word called adjusting. And it's 
sometimes really difficult for a child to adjust and a foster parent to adjust to the child when there's not much that they actually don't know about each other. So that's where cultural competency comes into place. So what cultural competency is, is actually really getting to know a little bit more about that culture before you just jump to conclusions of things you've either heard mm -hmm. or you heard through the grapevine. So to make a child feel comfortable, please do your research Ask them questions. Mm -hmm. Ask friends questions. Ask, ask your foster care agency. Foster care. Yeah, your workers. Yes. Look into the community of people who have experienced and they're educated and knowledge about what that child's background may possibly be before, you know, miscommunication happens and it's really awkward. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing. Moving on to uh, cultural diversity, ethnic hair care. There has been a couple questions about hair care. Um, that's a really big one. In foster care we have a lot of kids that come into the home all the way down to their hair is something that people really don't know what to do hey hi Kara hi Kara hey Sam thanks for joining hey Sam all right so I got some notes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really big subject guys <laughs> so what is ethnic hair Shay so basically, ethnic hair is basically um, different from regular hair. It operates a little bit differently. So in this example, if you probably cannot see. I can hold up it closer. closer. So you can see. Yes. There's a picture. It's backwards. The words are, sorry guys. So as you can see, they look like the hair over here is the ethnic hair. And then over here is the, the Caucasian hair. So, Shay, it looks like it's curly. Is all ethnic hair curly? Yes. Ethnic hair care isn't naturally grown straight. It's actually very curly, very kinky, and very curly. So the way your hair grows and looks depends on your hair, so that's how it can be decided by your ethnicity. So basically, um, your hair follicles from where they grow, it's not very straight, it's very tight, it's very coiled, and it's very kinky. So that's why the difference between these two, you have your ethnic hair and then you have which some people refer to as Caucasian hair or just naturally born straight hair. So if your hair has a little bit of a kink to it, it still falls under the realm of ethnic hair. Um, the thing, the difference between both of those is it's kind of more tightly porous and um, the reason why it's so kinky is because, I mean, just how the scalp just releases the hair. Um, but so it's you pretty have much more different oily hair then your hair is not as curly is that what you're saying more curly hair for if your hair is o more oily then it's straight it's straighter or no so for ethnic hair because our hair is so tightly coiled we don't have enough moisture to actually go down our hair follicles so that actually makes our hair more susceptible to being dry so if your hair is more straight your hair is more susceptible to being more greasy because the moisture has enough uh, moisture to travel down your hair shaft. So for someone with straight hair, basically the oils can come down, the grease can come down versus someone who has tightly coiled hair. It's kind of hard for all that moisture to travel down which is why a lot of um, people who do have ethnic hair because it's so tight and coiled it's really dry sometimes and that's why we use products to make it more moisturized. Okay. Alright. Now we, I do have an example of what ethnic hair looks like. Um, a lot of people have a perception thinking that ethnic hair only means that it's African American hair. Not all uh, ethnic hair is just African American hair. So you probably can't see from the screen behind us, but here are some pictures that I've pulled. And as you can see, ethnic hair comes in different shapes, sizes, colors. It comes from different ethnicities, races, and everything. As you can see, all of these children are different skin tones. Their hair is a different color from blonde to brown to red. So this is an example of ethnic hair. So I'll just hold that up for a little bit. You can probably see that. Anybody have any questions? Feel free to ask away. Anyone in your home Hello, or that you know with ethnic hair? So uh, in addition to someone having ethnic hair, uh, it's more textured and it hasn't been on honestly chemically altered. So there's a lot of common natural hairstyles that a person does use when they have ethnic hair. And I'll show you an example of that. And that example would be 
right here, that would be braids. The next one would be an afro. The next one would be bantu knots. This one right here is a high top with a fade. And this one right here would be twists or locks. And this one right here is sponge curls. So somebody with ethnic hair, not all the time do they want to chemically alter their hair. They want to keep it natural. So those are some hairstyles that a lot of people do wear nowadays to keep their hair natural without chemically altering with perms, relaxers, and texturizers. Because that's not always the safest thing to do with a person with ethnic hair. Um, but, any more questions to follow up with that one? Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> So you cover in your ethnic hair care training right now that um, they're, you know, what it is and, um, you know, maybe some people. <laughs> Hi, hey, Justin. <laughs> My girl. Um, some people might have, you know, questions to that. And if you do, feel free to ask away. Um, I know some of you may be thinking um, different things um, that you've heard if, about ethnic yeah, hair. Maybe that it doesn't grow, or is that true, or is that false? That is definitely false. There's okay. a huge misconception of that. So no matter what hair type you have, your hair naturally grows two inches. So when you have ethnic hair, it takes a little bit longer. It takes it grows exactly the same. It doesn't take longer. It doesn't take shorter. It just depends on how you're treating your hair, how you're moisturizing the hair. And because the hair is so tightly coiled, you can't actually see how long ethnic hair is because of the thing called shrinkage. And shrinkage may seem that our hair is a little bit shorter. It's just tightly coiled up in there. So, yes. So ethnic hair grows just as fast as everyone else's. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I had a lot of questions, which are basically the questions that I can answer, and they're hair myths. And that was one of the hair myths that I had that I put in one of my trainings, and it was, does ethnic hair actually grow? And it does. <laughs> All right, so another, thank you, Shay. <laughs> another question. Oh, oh. From Dustin. So when we have biracial toddlers, we learned a lot. Can you talk, hold on, sorry guys, it's going up. Can you talk about why they had to wear Ooh. satin hats to Yes, season? I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> Let me jump on this one. I got you, Dusty. Okay. So when you see a lot of people wearing a lot of satin head caps or something when they go to sleep, the reason for that is because your pillow fibers can actually break off uh, more ethnic hair than anything. Actually, anyone's hair, not just ethnic, but percentage-wise, ethnic hair is more easily to, to have breakage. So the reason why we wear those satin caps is because it actually help, it polishes our hair, keeps it very healthy, because when we go to sleep, if we don't wear that satin cap and we actually lay on our pillow, those pillow fibers actually rub against our hair and it causes breakage. So those satin caps is protective. <laughs> that, I mean, and even though I'm not sleeping, I still wear my satin cap 24-7. I gotta keep this polished. <laughs> Uh, hello, thanks for joining us. Okay, we have another question. How many times a week do you recommend washing ethnic hair per week? Per week, okay. So or I, per day. It depends on your child, the texture of your child's hair and definitely paying very close attention to their scalp. If their scalp is more dry, then be very careful washing their hair. Um, you can wash your child's hair at any given time, especially like they go to the park, it gets muddy or something. You're fine, you can wash it. Just make sure you're using the right products when washing hair. Uh, I will be going over some products that are actually really good to use for ethnic hair. Uh, it keeps it, it has a little bit more uh, healthier products and natural oils in it to keep the hair still moisturized as you're coming out of the water. And then you follow up with that with additional moisturizers to keep moisture for their hair. The reason for um, people asking, can you wash ethnic hair? You can, but it just pertains to how you are going to deal with it after they hit the water. So after they come out of the water, you need to make sure that it stays moisturized, very moisturized. When you say moisturized, okay, is there a certain type of moisturizer Ooh, or a certain yes. brand that um, works best for? I'll show you guys um, some pictures of those. So okay. um, everybody's already heard of shea butter. 
So shea butter is really <laughs> good to use on the hair. You have other products like Cantu. Uh, you have other products like olive oil. You have other things like for children, just for me. Those are great products or hair milk. These products are different from things that people have a perception thinking that grease is the only thing ethnic hair can use. No, no, no. Because grease actually clogs the pores at times. Um, hi. So basically these moisturizers are what keeps moisture in. These are products that are mainly for ethnic hair. Uh, the moisture is to be kept in. If it's not, then our hair will be very dry. So that's why um, after following up with washing the hair, you want to use these specific um, moisturizers because it keeps moisture in. If you use other products that's not normally used for ethnic hair, it's not used to keep the moisture in. It's probably just used just to keep the hair more thicker or volumized. It probably has a little bit more chemicals that's going to cause the hair to be dry and cause breakage once it dries. And if you have questions about like different types of moisturizer, Shay would be happy to answer. Absolutely. Um, different brands. She's going to show you some. I probably um, can't kinds. see most of them, Maybe but a little closer. we've got shea butter, we got Pantene, we have Cantu, we have olive oils, we have Just For Me, um, and there's a whole lot more, uh, How, which is... We have some see, questions, well, sorry. We have more questions, which would be more like um, avocado oil, carrot oil, uh, sunflower seed oil, and also hemp oil as well is really good for the hair too. Thanks, Jay. It says, since you talk about so much moisture, do you blow dry it then? You sure can. Cool. Just read the back of the bottle just to make sure what's the proper temperature to blow dry the hair once you put that product in the child's hair. Would satin sheets be better for <laughs> children since you wear satin cap? <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to go all the way, that's that's fine. But... To save you money, a hair cap is perfectly fine. You can find it at a local Walmart or a Walgreens. Easy. <laughs> or Amazon. Amazon. Or Amazon. Or Amazon. <laughs> so what about chlorine, chlorine swimming, swimming pools? pools? That's the big one. Um, honestly, if a child goes swimming and they have ethnic hair, it's going to dry their hair out because, I mean, technically you're jumping in a water that's full of chemicals. So even if you have ethnic hair or non-ethnic hair, it's going to dry your hair out. It's just... Your responsibility to make sure after you get out of the pool to put some moisturizer in your hair, wash it again with whatever product to bring it back to life and get it back to being healthy. Cool. Okay. Um, how often should you get your child's hair braided? Ooh, that is a very good question. So getting your child's hair braided, you don't want to do it so often because it can cause the scalp to get very irritated. And what you want to do is um, give your child's head a break. If, say, your child gets their hair braided and the braids only last for a week, perfect. Give it a full another week, let their scalp breathe, and then go uh, get their hair braided again. Um, oh, good. I use coconut oil too, Dusty. <laughs> um, let's follow back on our, Question. on our questions. All right. <laughs> um, so, let's throw one out on. We want one too. Let's jump in. <laughs> so, protective styling is Ooh. used... Um, and is unhealthy for ethnic hair or is it, is well, it healthy or not healthy? That's a good question. So that's following along with the with Sienna's question about braids. Protective styling is very healthy for ethnic hair. Uh, like I said, the only way it can be unhealthy is if you're doing the protective styling after every single style that you do. And I actually have an example of protective styling. So you need to let it like breathe? Like after you That's right. Use Always protection. let it okay. breathe. So say your child, like I said, goes to get her hair braided and then the braids start to wear off and then you want to take her to go get her hair braided again. Let her breathe for a second. Give her about a week and then take her back to her beautician, have her braided again and it'll be good as new. It's pretty much letting her scalp become strong again. Oh, why don't you tell them what protect? So not, not maybe not everybody might not know what protective, protective styling, styling is. is. So what is protective styling? So here's some examples of protective styling. So, um, before I show that, so here's some examples of protective styling. So you have braids, you have sew-ins, you have plaits, you have, um, let's see, you have what people have now is wigs or new wig technology. Um, we have locks, twists, all those type of things are protective styling. The reason why protective styling is so important is because uh, the three main things, it retains growth for a child with ethnic hair, 
It's a time saver, so you don't have to really get up and do their hair in the morning. It keeps their hair soft and very healthy, and it's also very versatile. So it can make the child feel like they have a personality and they can be very creative with whatever style they want to do with their hair. Protective styling is put into place for a child with ethnic hair because they don't want to chemically alter their hair. Uh, and that's a really big stigma. A child with ethnic hair is always told to chemically alter their hair because it is seen as unruly or unprofessional. But protective styling is a whole nother way they don't really have to do much to their hair and they can be versatile with it. See, hmm. Miss Dusty. Thanks, Shay. Man, okay. Another question, guys. So when you had our girl, you can read it if oh, you want to read it. So Sorry. When we, so when we had our girls, who have since moved to an adoptive home. They've had a lot of trauma around their hair. Mm -hmm. It has almost, it was almost matted and their scalp, ooh. We were told not to shave their hair, but it was, it was horrid. We spent weeks working Sorry their hair that. to being back to healthy, but it was not fun. Is this a myth, the short hair thing? Um, so for them, it sounds like whoever Whatever care they were in, that person probably did not keep no up with their hair or and didn't know what to, didn't do. Know what to do. So um, sometimes, yes, if their hair is to a point where it's severely damaged, then you did the right thing. I mean, you tried to work with it, but if it is just still untreatable, then there are things where you just have to cut their hair in and start all over. We'll which take them that's to a salon or something. A salon. Maybe somebody that knows yeah. or has worked with their hair with their for hair. a long time Yep, knows what to do. I've been actually in that situation before where I was uh, chemically altering my hair so much doing relaxers and texturizers that it messed up my hair. So I actually had to go to a salon to say, I have to start over. You got to cut it all off. Of course, being an I'm adult, sure that was traumatizing. it was traumatizing. <laughs> of course, being an adult, I still had my mom with me. And the best thing that she did for me was encouraged me. We looked through magazines to say, um, this may be the beginning. And it may feel a little hard, but we're going to get through it. And then she showed pictures and everything to me. So then it made me feel like, wow, I can, this makes me feel so much better. <laughs> Another question. It was rough. Uh, lots and lots of naps. Uh, we didn't cut it because, oh, oh no, nope, we don't want to post to you guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay. It was rough, lots and lots of naps. We didn't cut it because we were told it was bad. We just hired someone to come in and work with their hair once mm -hmm. a week. They eventually were okay, but it was a ton of work. It is. Kudos so, to you for doing that and, it out. and advocating for the children. So good job. Yes. I'm glad you did not go to the last resort. <laughs> what is the last resort? That would be cutting it. That's um, a whole yeah. other stage of trauma that probably would have been added to them, but yeah. So, so good job. Good job. Um, so remember, while we, um, while I'm thinking about it, if you like, comment, and share this video, yes. you will be entered for a chance to win a gift card. Yay! Um, maybe um, whoever it is, I'll contact and ask you what your favorite restaurant or coffee shop is, and maybe you'll get lucky. And we it's okay, Dusty. It I can come do your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty says she doesn't even do her own hair. And it was a whole learning curve. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, that's the coolest thing about um, working for New Beginnings Family Services is that we encourage our foster parents to understand these things so they can be educated on it. So any child that comes into their home, the child feels comfortable. They feel comfortable because this isn't something that's going to go away. This is something that's happen happening recently today. And Hi. You can Google it. Uh, there's actually a foster parent. Uh, she she was white and she did have uh, an African American child. And when she was on TV, she was explaining, I did not know what to do with this child's hair. So she actually reached out to a woman and she talked to her and was with her every step of the way. So this is a pretty popular subject right now. Shared. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. <laughs> if you guys have questions, let me know. Yes. Any other hair care myths? Yeah, so um, we kind of already went over one of them. <laughs> People with ethnic, ethnic hair don't wash their hair. We kind of talked, about, talked that. about that. Yeah, um, grease is the only product you need for ethnic hair. Is that true? We kind of talked about that too, with like the different <laughs> with oils, different oils, the oils and moisturizers. Yeah. So grease is good to be used, like when you have braids, or um, basically when you have a protective style and your scalp is more exposed. 
because uh, grease can technically clog your pores, but there are some greases that are very healthy for a child's hair. Um, it's just more meant for, honestly, it's just scalp food. That's exactly what grease is, it's just yeah. scalp food. So grease is normally, it's basically used to actually be fully applied to the scalp. That's why you see a lot of people using grease in between braids and everything else to kind of keep the scalp still moisturized. So grease is still a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing depending on what grease you're using. Some greases have a lot of chemicals in it where it can make your scalp dry, it could have a lot of sulfur in it. Um, there's, there's quite a few chemicals that can actually be in grease, but it's still very helpful. What kind of rubber bands? Dude, hair styling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what kind of rubber bands do you use? If you use rubber bands or what kind of hair? Don't use the plastic ones. I mean, if it's got some stretch to it, you got the right one. If you can pull it and it don't break, that is the right rubber bands. <laughs> Because there's uh, those, you go to the outer store, like there's little plastic ones. Yeah. The really thin ones. The ones I was using before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those break really bad. Yeah. Oh, you want the actual like rubber, rubber bands, the little mini ones, they're thick. So don't go for the plastic ones. If it's rubber, go for it. Um, for some kids, uh, if their hair's a little bit thin or you're kind of worried about the rubber band pulling, use cloth. Use the cloth ties. Those work perfectly. It doesn't pull their hair and it's a lot more comfortable too. Is there any other hair product or hair, um, I don't know, things bands or like other oh, things? Oh, yeah. What do you guys use? Cuckoo balls. If anyone knows what those, anyone know what cuckoo balls are? I know half of you guys know what cuckoo <laughs> balls are. Cause I call it, does anyone else call them something balls. different? I swear to I've never heard of that. What, what do you call them? Ball I don't balls? even know what they are. They're little balls you put in your hair. We call them cuckoo balls. I put balls in my hair? Yeah. You guys put balls in your hair? Do you? <laughs> pig, pig ball poops. No, that that's what you got. <laughs> that's what she said. She does. <laughs> I thank you. Yes, you can put cuckoo balls in your hair. Uh, for some of the for for girls, you can put cuckoo balls even in boys' hairs. Um, we have beads now. We have little bead clips, so you don't actually have to put them like on the braid. You can actually just clip them on. Are you talking stuff. about beads? Cuckoo balls are beads. No. Both. You can do okay. cuckoo balls. Okay, I'm going to have to do my research after this, guys. I'm going to show her some cuckoo balls. You're going to have so much fun. Just... <laughs> and you get little big ones, little small ones, any color. You got beads, you have barrettes, you have uh, ribbons. I mean, it's endless. They have new beads now where you can actually, like, clip them onto your braid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know beads. Yeah. yeah the open nice beads. Yeah. I like those. They're really so... popular with, uh, with if you have locks, bantu knots and locks. Like yeah, the braid. protective hairstyles. My fave. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> do you know, like, when people started putting, like, beads in their hair? Or, like, um... Like, the history kind of yeah. on it? Um, I don't think there's really a history on it. I think it's more of a fashion trend okay. than anything. Okay. Uh, it's sometimes it's more, like, littler children that have them in their hair, uh -huh. but now it's starting to be a lot more popular with adults, too. Oh, really? Cuckoo balls, I don't think they're really having a trend now, but oh, they're beads out. are. Okay. I think they're kind of getting out. Okay. Maybe because kids are swallowing them, probably. I don't know. I just haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen many kids with cuckoo balls in their hair now. If you have <laughs> if you have an issue or um, any thoughts of your child maybe swallowing them, I wouldn't use them. <laughs> no, they're an elastic. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that is right. <laughs> Uh, she said figure eight with a ball on the end, right? Pretty much. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Oh, okay. Oh, oh thanks. I'm not going to bring something to work tomorrow. Like, Nicole, cool. <laughs> got some cuckoo balls. And I'm going to cuckoo ball Nicole's hair and post it on I'm New Beginnings page. I'm cuckoo balls, guys. We'll, we'll tie it into ethnic hair care training using cuckoo balls. <laughs> cuckoo <laughs> on Nicole, balls. our recruiter trainer. <laughs> share, share, share. We'll, we'll post a picture. Can we do that? so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Nicole, would you know when... If you saw, okay, I would know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I probably would. You're probably right. That's so funny. I'm trying That's to see hilarious. if we have any more questions. Pigtail poofs were my favorite go-to. The toddlers love yes. them. Um, the big one, I, well, it's probably this, probably the next question we for We have everyone. another question. Okay. How are there any social stigmas? when Ooh. having a child with ethnic hair? So what are the stigmas around ethnic hair, Shay? Oh, man. I'm going to get real with you guys, okay? We're going to get real. So there is an actual social stigma of children who have ethnic hair. So for a child who has ethnic hair, nowadays, even till today, they're being told by their teachers, their peers, and even parents 
that say that their hair is too nappy, it's ugly, or it's unruly, or it's unprofessional. From the age of adolescent to an adult, a person with ethnic hair really has to go through that sort of, sort of pressure in society today. Uh, you can actually research and Google, like even places in Jamaica, uh, a girl was actually suspended from school for having braids in her hair. Um, it even falls down to the military and our, our services um, having ethnic hair. It was looked at as unruly, having braids or uh, their hair being out or maybe poofed out. It had to be slicked straight back, but it's kind of hard with ethnic hair to do different styles that are very manipulative because it's not hard. It's really hard to manipulate ethnic hair. So uh, not until actually, which I actually have here in my notes, not until recently they actually changed the law to actually allow people with ethnic hair to do a little bit more different things since there wasn't really much we could do. <laughs> we have a comment. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, you will find tons of articles, Dusty, of people even telling toddlers <laughs> or telling telling parents saying that your toddler's hair is a hot mess, like you need to do something with it. And you're like, I like my daughter having a little afro or a curly afro. I think it's cute. I, I think it's cute. But or, it's it's a real situation. What she said was, I would get so mad when anyone said anything about my toddlers and their hair, like scary mommy. Yes, yes. Good. Oh, yeah. You should. Advocate but for those kids. Get the, out there and do that. Bigger, the <laughs> even bigger one to piggyback on those stigmas is if a foster child comes through a foster home and say that a foster parent isn't really that much educated on, you know, ethnic care. Sometimes they would just go by what they know and they would be like, okay, well, I really, I personally feel like I don't like your hair that way. So that's where the chemically alter, chemically alters start to come into play where they're like, you need to straighten your hair. And that's what a lot of people with ethnic hair have to deal with when people are like, maybe you should just straighten your hair and it's a lot prettier. And to somebody with ethnic hair, that hurts their feelings mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and kids deal with it at school every single day as well. And also when they grow up and they go to work, they're told that they need to straighten their hair or they need to chemically alter it so it fits the professional world. And it's like, I don't want to do that because this is the way I'm born and I don't want to change who I am. Yeah. So it's good to teach these children to... Um, that their hair is beautiful, you that know, beautiful. teach them to love themselves because if they don't love themselves, how are they supposed I to love, love anyone else? <laughs> yeah. So just, just so really well, teach themselves so they love them. One themselves. thing that I, I wrote in one of my trainings to our parents is people with ethnic hair use their hairstyles as a personal expression of who they are and it shows an evolution of their culture over time. An evolution in which has brought us to a time where more and more People, children are embracing their natural beauty of their own hair, and it has the power to dictate how others treat you and how you treat yourself. So that's a big one. Um, for some children who aren't that lucky to have someone who is educated on their hair, and they're told to chemically alter their hair, this is where that thing comes in where it's called cultural identity crisis. So a child will think, well, say I'm an African American child and I've been told to straighten my hair, it can become a cultural identity issue where they feel like they don't love who they are because someone's telling them to be something different. And not to hate the person, definitely, who wants them to be different. It's just because they just have a lack of knowledge and they just need to be taught the right way. Um, but those are some really big ones. I know. Thanks, I know. Um, another one would be embrace your child. Uh, if you don't know, that's okay. Just ask questions. We we at New Beginnings, we want to encourage and support our parents and also the public to assist children and embrace their cultures and their bodies so that they can be proud of who they are. Mm -hmm. So it's just best to just reach out to somebody if you don't know. Don't be afraid because it's better to reach out and know something than not to know something at all. Right. Right. Educate yourself. Educate. That's the biggest key. Education. So, Education. now that we know all of this and yes. it's all dandy, um, if you have questions, just ask away. Yeah. If you don't know how to approach your child when it comes to ethnic care, there are books, people, lots and lots of books where you can sit down with your child and talk to them about hair care. It's a great way to start up the conversation <laughs> or to make them feel at ease that they're not the only person in the world. There's actually people who write about it and make all the other children in the world feel more comfortable. Um, if you actually do want to know what some of these books are, just go ahead and comment. Um, we can 
read out loud what the book is. Why don't we do that? So we have Natalie's Hair Was Wild by Laura Freeman. Uh, this one's Nappy by um, I don't know how to Carisi? say that. Carisi, Carisi, Carney Nunes. Nunes. Uh, I love my haircut by Natasha Tarpley. I love, I love my hair by <laughs> Natasha Tarpley. And Emmy's Curly Coil Cotton Candy Hair. And that one is by Tina, and I actually cannot pronounce her last name. Um, Tina Olaji. Olaji? Olaji? Yeah. Um, can you post them to the page after the video? Yes, sure can. we can. We will do that. Yes. Thanks for asking. Yes, yes, yes. Um, are there any other resources that you can think of for foster parents? Uh, for foster parents dealing with ethnic hair care, mm -hmm. um, lots of lots of research. Um, you'll find lots of stuff. Uh, if not, I mean, let us become your resource. Feel free to contact our office if you have any questions about ethnic hair care. We don't mind explaining a little bit to you. Um, also, go to hair salons. Uh, reach out to people who you know that may be experienced with hair and say, hey, I have this child with ethnic hair. I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. Something. But that's that's pretty much the only resources you probably have is research and talking, communicating, because you'll find somebody that can really reach out to help you. That's true. It is. All right. Hello, Phyllis. Thanks Hi, for Phyllis. joining. So for some of you guys, have you ever had a child with um, in your home that had ethnic hair care, that had ethnic hair or who was uh, culturally different from you? And do you have any challenges with that? Any challenges? I have friends that use baby oil on their kids. Sure hair. can. Is that a good idea. It is a good. You can use baby oil uh, in their hair. Uh, just, I would say, do a little bit more research on the baby oil because I know some baby oils do have some chemicals in it. In my opinion, I'd rather you probably use more carrot oils, more coconut, um, oil. coconut oils, more natural oils than Can you use baby oil. olive oil? You can definitely use olive oil. What about like the oils that you cook with? I know that's a crazy question. Oh, no. Like, can well, canola oil. I know you probably like... heard people saying using Crisco for Crisco. your hair, but they kind of eliminated that. <laughs> so no Crisco. No Crisco for the hair. They got other oils and natural moisturizers, but baby oil is still a good choice to use for the hair. I think it's a good choice. We've been using our baby's hair. They're all fine to me. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for that question, guys. So those of you that um, have joined us, that, um, just joined us, um, feel free to like, comment, and Was share this hat. video, and you will be entered for a chance to win. Um, would uh, lotion skin and put on our sleep hat and read a story so it worked oh good yes glad to hear that oh yeah so it's it all ties in I, I love wearing a satin cap at night it makes my hair so shiny <laughs> so shiny <laughs> it's so nice so going along with like um we were talking about oils and moisturizers and stuff is there the like good ones that you use on your skin like the ones that we talked about oh yeah uh, most of the natural oils that uh, me and Nicole said, like uh, olive oil and avocado oil, coconut oil. coconut oil, hemp oil, those things are multi-use to where it is healthy for your hair and it's healthy for your skin, your hair, your nails, all of it. Um, but the best thing to do before applying any, and everyone listen to me with this one, before you apply any sort of product to your child's hair, please do the research first.
All right, guys. He's still there. Hey, guys. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Like, comment, and share, and you will be entered into a drawing. That's right. Since we only have a little bit of time left, Nicole. All right. Let's see what, uh, let's see what, how many comments we get on our letters. Okay. I don't know how we're going to do this. Sorry. Uh, we'll scoot. I'll scoot back. <laughs> okay. So, Close for the, the last... Now. <laughs> for the last part of this video, um, I think you're backwards. Are we upside down? Okay. I don't know why it keeps turning over. Okay, there we go. There we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. So, for the last part of the video, we wanted you guys to talk about um, care, the word care. Yes. So, with hair care, but then also... Um, we talked about the word foster last week, um, the last video, and so foster care, we wanted to do that along with care. So um, we're going to do the letters of care. C-A-R-E, in case anybody thinks it starts with a K. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, C, what that, the word that goes along with that letter for me. I want to participate with this one, let me, let me think. <laughs> I want to do my first. I want to do my first. Okay, I got she's it. gonna do it. Before I forget compassion. Okay, That's a big one. Why? What does compassion? The word compassion mean to you? Every child needs compassion. They just need a really big hug. They need someone to love them and have utmost understanding. Because if a child doesn't have someone who understands them, then who will? Make them open up more. I love that. Compassion. <laughs> All right, we had someone post curls. Oh, that's a good one. Good. That's your too. Cool. That is really good. Curls and cuddles. Oh, very good. I love that. If I open up a salon, I'm taking that. I got rights to that, right? Curls and cuddles? <laughs> what about A? See anyone with some A's? Hang on. I didn't, I didn't say a C. Oh, I just skipped over skipping me. Nicole. I got excited. Sorry, guys. This is fun. <laughs> How about coconut oil for hair since we talked about see and um coconut oil is for good for hair but yes. skin as well and oh my gosh what are people using it for putting in soaps and essential oils you know and it. You know nowadays it. you have all these things that coconut oil is good Heck, for. they have products you can put in your hair and drink them at the same time i know right I what know. is that <laughs> <laughs> i would have to think on the lavender because you can put that you put lavender in your hair and drink it too <laughs> I wouldn't recommend drinking it. It's probably too Hey, it's gross. pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Not in coconut oil, but... They have lavender lemonade. I know. I heard about that. Uh, you guys should try that. We should try good. it. <laughs> what about okay. some A's? Okay. How about a um, word that, that uh, reminds you of hair... Uh, care, sorry. Of hair care or uh, foster care. Afro. Uh -huh, that's a good one. I love me some afros. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it's your a, afro? You you don't have your afro on. Not yet, but I will. <laughs> I get out of the shower and poof. <laughs> it's a monster to tackle, but let me tell you, I do magic. <laughs> she has beautiful hair. I don't know what she's talking about. I'm like a work, okay? <laughs> Anyone else with some A's? Come on, you gotta outdo my afro. There's so much more with the letter A. How about adopt? For all you kiddos um, out there that are going to be what adopted. <laughs> Adoption. Uh, yes. Um, and all you foster parents out there that have adopted or are um, working towards adoption. Um, it's amazing. And it's an amazing thing. And if you don't know. Adoption. Um, a. <laughs> if you don't know what. Um, like what is going on with with your adoption, um, feel free to ask your worker Please, um, yes. if you are working towards adoption. Sorry, the bit is a little shaky. Um, yeah, and if you have adopted, we'd love awesome. to hear about your experience. Please share because we just love those success stories. We really do. I love a tearjerker. It saves me from flicking through the channels of Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, we had an A word. Um, Awesome. Awesome. Yes. 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 Hair care and um, foster care is awesome. So yes. if you just joined us, we're talking about the letters in care for hair care because we did ethnic hair care today um, in um, cultural diversity. And we are also doing care for foster care. Yes. So um, we just did the letter C and A. And um, we just wanted you to, to um, say a word 
that reminds you of either foster care or hair care or we talk for about those today. letters <laughs> so yeah. we're doing we're doing r and don't be, if, don't be shy because i see 11 of you people <laughs> it's you can't give me the letter a come on Come on, it's, <laughs> come on, just one letter. You could say apple. <laughs> yeah, you foster kids eat apples, you know? Health and hygiene. Everybody eats apples. Thank you. Health and hygiene, that's where it's at, okay? So, that's really good. Health and hygiene. What do you think? Another another A word? Yeah. Look at me talking about everyone else talking about <laughs> the letter A. I'm trying to think of something We can move on to R. A. And if you guys think of C or A um, right now while we're doing the next I'm letter, feel free to one. comment accomplishments accomplishments yeah that's a big one Woo-hoo. with adjust oh ah, we got somebody to join in adjust thank round of you applause. thank you Nisha. <laughs> round of applause adjust yes because everything we touched on is all about adjusting from ethnic hair care to when we place these children in the home that is the biggest word she was listening because that's the word i said the most important word was Adjust. adjust yeah that's, get it girl get it yeah Good so adjusting you. with um hair care and with freaking foster care you know uh, good uh, job okay. <laughs> acceptance you guys acceptance. are good with okay this is a little competition here okay <laughs> acceptance yes no joke side acceptance is very very important because that is that is what every child expects when they come into a home it's just to be accepted and never to be looked at as anything different so that's a good one. Could I see you, Chica? Kudos. Kudos. Come on now. Come on. Come on. We got two people that's showing out, guys. We just need I one know. more how, A. How badly do you want this gift card? Oh, you t- <laughs> <laughs> It's no secret. Oh, gosh. All right. On. Moving on to R. On Since R. we don't have anybody commenting. Um, you got an R? You're better looking on here than I am. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> so it helped me. I need one. I need an R. I need an R. So I guess respect, R- respect. R E S P E C T. The you know if you don't give respect, then um, you're not gonna get, get it, it right. So <laughs> you gotta teach these kiddos respect and um, relate. And relate. Oh yeah, you gotta be relatable when you when you're teaching them. Yes, I always relate to try to be relatable to the kids because it's a lot more easier for you guys to relate on something. It builds the relationship between you two. Relationship. You something. That's another. There you go. See. Um, it, it builds something between you guys. So, I got relate and relationship. Rest. Rest. Oh, that's a good one. Can all the foster parents <laughs> give a clap? I can't hear you, but I know you're clapping. I know, because all you guys need rest. You need you rest. Know? And you know rest. what? The best way to get that, you can uh, utilize respite. The other R. <gasps> you did what I was going to say. <laughs> utilize that uh, R word that we provide is respite. And if you want to know any additional information, Nicole's your girl. So, Respite. Yeah. We could use a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> rejuvenation. Any, rejuvenate. Yeah. Rejuvenate. So you can rejuvenate. That's just a random R word out. I don't know. I actually can't. Rice. Speak. There we go. I don't know any. What's another R foods? <laughs> we need another R, guys. I can't think of any other food that starts with R. What the heck? What's another food that starts with an R? Ravioli ravioli the one meal you do feed your kids when like dusty said when you want to rest and you don't really feel like cooking the meal ravioli everybody <laughs> yeah amen and our last letter e excellent <laughs> <laughs> how about um emerging because um a child is definitely emerging yeah. out of their shell when you definitely relate yeah. to them you show them compassion. You let them adjust. It's a lot. Energy, absolutely. I will say for an emotion. Yes, lots to of emotions. Piggyback on energy and emotions. If you are not a foster parent, let me tell you. As a foster parent, it is a lot of energy and it is a lot of emotion. But I have to give all of our foster parents kudos because they maintain that very well. Mm-hmm. Very well. Amen, sister. <laughs> This whole field is a lot of energy and a lot of emotion. But at the end of the day, everybody loves everybody. Everybody's trying to make a change and change lives. So Get it, girl. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Elmer's glue because if you don't have a family that sticks together, together. like glue, then you guys are just going to fall apart. That was so espresso. Just you said espresso. Amen, sister. Espresso. With lavender. <laughs> 
gonna show up at all staff. I'm gonna have a uh, espresso lavender latte. Yeah. Woo woo. Um, E. You definitely need espresso for energy. I'm telling you. Evolving. Oh yeah, because you're evolving out of your shadow. As a family, you're going to evolve. And it's going to happen because when you place a foster child in your home, everybody's evolving. Everybody's adjusting all in one setting. So when you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing for a foster child and even your own child, have them evolve. That's the best thing. So it makes them a better person. Mm -hmm. What else is for E? Anybody think of any E words? If you just joined us, um, we are doing the letter or the word care oh. for foster care and yes. for ethnic hair care, okay. care um, because we talked about that during the video today. If you want to go back and watch it, That's right. um, but we did um, each letter of of care. So you just tell us what word makes you think of um, ethnic hair or foster care because we did foster the word foster last week and we're doing care this week. So. That's right. Please join us. Can you think of any other, any other words for the the word care? Um, ethnic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ethnic. Uh, yeah. Education. That's yeah. a big one. Thank you, girlfriend. Education is key. So all of our foster parents and all of our actual to our public education is key. Educate yourself on whatever you need to know first before jumping into it. Yeah, that's a big one. I like education. Educated. Get educated. I don't know the other E words. I want the hard one. Well, Put me on the spot. we're wrapping it up, and this is the end of the video. Also, so I want to let everybody know to understand that the month of April and May is very important because April is. Who's going to say it first? <laughs> Wait for you guys to awareness up? That's right. <laughs> See, you guys are too slow. Nicole, Nicole already did it. Child Abuse Awareness Month. So, um, at least after um, our Facebook Live, just realize that that's this month. So, wear your blue. And then uh, for the month of May, it is going to be Foster Care Awareness Month. Um, and also, Nicole is going, before we go, she's going to let you know a couple things that we're actually doing here at the office. So, uh, it actually has to deal with Florence Freedom while you guys are all here. Hey guys, so we are having a Florence Freedom Day, and we'd love to, for you guys to join us. Um, the tickets are, you have to purchase them online, they're $10 a piece, um, and part of the proceeds um, come to us, so um, we'd love to have you join us. There's an event, a um, little post thing on our page, you can go find out more information on there. Um, we'd love for you to join us. If you want to find out more information about foster care, please feel free to go to our website. Um, and, yeah, or call us. We'd love to hear from you. Love Especially if you have out. any questions about ethnic hair care um, or just about being a foster parent in general. Yes. And um, thanks, Dusty. You're awesome. We love you. Thank and you. we'll see you on Friday. On Friday! Fry yay. Fry yay. With my uh my latte and some lavender. I'm gonna try this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, in my uh what are they called? Cuckoo beets. Cuckoo balls. <laughs> my cuckoo balls. <laughs> I love you, Nicole. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gents, it's been fabulous. We enjoyed our time with you. Um we will be saying who's our winner. We'll announce it on our tomorrow. Page. But we're guess we're... what? You won't know if you won if you haven't liked our page. So make sure you like our page so you, you know gotta, if you won. You got to comment. And you got to comment too. And you got to share. Come on. Share the space. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peeps. Thanks for joining us. We love you. We're out. Peace out.